Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to take you through how I take my Instagram photos. So I'm going to take you through the process of taking the photos, uh, editing the photos, and then sort of saving them as a draft before I upload them to Instagram. Uh, I've had a couple of you ask how I do this. All of the photos that you see on my Instagram are taken by myself, so they are done without a photographer, without somebody else helping me. I set my phone up on a tripod and then I have an app that allows me to take multiple photos without having to keep going backwards and forwards to the phone to retake it, pose, set the timer, and so on and so forth. So I'll show you that too. Uh, but yeah, this video is going to be about the whole process of taking my photos, editing them, and uploading them to Instagram. So the first thing I do is I do a workout because on Instagram my page is a fitness page, so I try to keep within that niche as much as possible. So whenever I take my photos, I tend to do it after I've done a workout because my muscles have a lot of blood in them, they've got a big pump, uh, and I just look a little bit better. So it's not that I'm trying to pretend to be somebody that I'm not or that I'm you know, editing my photos to make me somebody completely different. But I do take my photos at the end of my workout because I want to look a little bit bigger and I want my photos to be as good as possible to then generate more reach, have a better engagement, and then drive my Instagram uh, from there. So without further ado, I'm going to run through a chest, shoulders and tricep workout or a push day, uh, and then I will catch up with you guys once I've done that. That's my workout done. You've seen a quick time lapse of it. Uh, really fatigued now. I don't take pre workout as you've probably heard in previous videos. So I only had one caffeine pill to hit all of that workout and got some good numbers in there, got, got a lot of volume, which was good. I'm now going to show you how to take your Instagram photos. Now, two things you need to know. Number one, if you don't take your photos within 0.2 milliseconds of your workout, you've basically wasted the workout, okay? You're going to lose your pump and it's not going to be very aesthetic. I am joking, um, but there is a serious note behind that, you keep your pump, so the quicker you take the photo, the more pump you have, uh, the bigger your muscles are going to look in the photo, if you want to look big in your photos that is. So I'm going to get on, I'm going to take a photo, I'm then going to probably have a protein shake while I go through my photos, um, and I'll show you that process now from start to finish of how it all works. One thing that I forgot to say, um, the app that I use to take my photo is called uh, Photo Timer Plus. Before I got this app, it's completely free to use again. It's got loads of settings inside it, as you saw when I was taking my photos. It took me a while to find an app that actually worked the way I wanted it to work without having to pay. Uh, but before I had this app, if you don't want to download the app, completely understand. What you can do is you can set your phone up to record, you can set your phone up to video, um, and then what you can do is you can go back to the video, pause it at a certain time, take a screenshot and do it that way. You don't quite get as crisp an image, which is why I take the photos rather than do it through the video, me video method. But this still works. I used to do it on my Instagram feed before I started using photos. And if you look carefully enough, they're not quite as sharp, so you can probably tell which ones are videos and which ones are photos. But now I just use photos, they're so much more useful. Uh, but that's called Photo Timer Plus, and I would strongly recommend it. Really easy to use 
you don't have to set your phone up on a timer. Walk your phone, have a look, set the time up again, walk back, home, and so on and so forth. It just makes the whole process really streamlined, really easy. You can choose how far apart you take the photos, the intervals, the delay, all of that kind of stuff, and it's completely free to use, and it uses your lightweight camera and saves so you stretch your camera roll, so you don't have to even worry about taking them off the app and putting them on your phone for you. It does it all automatically. Right, now that I've finished my workout, it is time for uh, my protein shake and my BCAAs, my branch chain amino acids. If you don't take these within 30 minutes of working out, you've basically ruined your workout. Um, no, I am completely joking. But there is technically a little bit more benefit to taking them after uh, your workout, rather than at the beginning of the day like I do with my creatine. Okay, so I'm going to kind of like just drink my protein as I do the rest of the video for you guys. So the first thing that I do is I um, jump into my photos and I look at the photos that, that I've just taken. So I've got the, the three trial kind of photos to check my framing uh, and then I've got the actual shoot that I did. Now, the lighting wasn't great for this. It was a little bit too bright in the sun and a little bit too dark in the shade. It's kind of like midday here um, in the UK. When I took these in winter, which means the light's quite harsh, so lighting is quite important. I like to do my focus outside so I get natural light, um, but if you want to you know, have slightly darker lighting, it's completely up to you. Don't forget your Instagram is your uh, No one should tell you what you can and can't do. It's completely up to you. Um, that being said, these are a little bit dark. I want my feet to be quite light, so we might be able to edit the lighting um, once we've selected the photos we want in Instagram and I'll show you how to do that in a bit. So first off I go through my photos and I click the little heart at the bottom to save it to my favourites um, and I kind of just select the better ones that I might use. So now that I've selected my favourites, um, I'll jump into my favourites and as you can see, pre-saved, I've got some that I have already used. Um, so these ones have already been drafted so I'll go through and unsave them so that I know which ones that I'm working with. Right, okay, so now I've got my photos that I've just taken. Uh, I've selected kind of the better ones. I'm now going to go through and do like a second filter uh, and I'm going to deselect the ones that I don't want to use. So I've kind of done a really generous first filter. I'm now going to go through and do a second selection um, of the photos that, that we took today. Okay, so I've now filtered them down to nine photos. That's probably going to be two, maybe three posts. We'll put them in a carousel, the ones where you swipe to the uh, left to see the next one, um, which is what I'm probably going to do. So I've got my favorites from that. The next thing I do is I jump over onto the Instagram app and I create a post. So when creating the post, I'll always select the first photo and I'll click the little two arrows down in the bottom left there to make it a profile image or a portrait image, not a profile image. Um, the reason that I do that is because that takes up the most space on your phone when someone's scrolling through their feed, so you take up more real estate on the phone screen as someone goes through their Instagram feed. Um, you can do a square photo, uh, but personally I put them into uh, portrait photos so that it takes up more space. Someone's more likely to see it, someone's more likely to engage with it. The only trouble with when you do that is if you have your portrait mode and then you zoom in a little bit, when it then goes onto your feed, I will show you what I mean in a second. When it then goes onto your actual feed, it cuts off the top part. So I never want to put my head near the top of the screen like that, because then when someone's looking at my page, looking at all of the photos on my homepage, they won't see my face. What I mean by that is this. So for example, if I scroll down a little bit and I select one where it's cut off my face, like this one for example, it's a profile image, my head's quite near the top, but when we go back and look at it, as you can see, my head is half cut off. So that's just something to keep in mind, just a little trick that makes your profile look a little bit more professional, like I've done on my more recent ones, uh, but I felt this a couple of times. I did it on this one, I did it on this one. Uh, but as you can see, they're all profile pictures, 
Um, they're all portrait pictures, I keep saying profile, sorry, they're all portrait pictures that I, um, that I use when I upload. So jumping back onto our posts, uh, I tend to select my favourites because that's where we've got our, our um, favourite photos from. And um, I'm only going to go through one of these so you can kind of get the idea. But I'll tap the little arrow and then I'll tap the um, carousel button. Now, for example, if I go for this photo, uh, I might also want to put up that photo with it, and then I might finish off with a tricep one. So they're going to be our three photos. We three the same. Um, then we're going to click next in the top right, and this is where we begin to edit our photos. Now, I will never jump onto Photoshop and physically change my shape, my size, and all of that kind of stuff, but I will change the lighting. I might change a bit of contrast just to make the background pop a little bit more, maybe make the image a bit sharper, but I'll never change myself. Um, so I don't class this as editing photos, I class it as making the photo nicer rather than making how I look different in the photo. Um, so I jump into the first one, I'll click the edit, um, I'll adjust it, remembering that I want to keep a little bit of space above my head so that it doesn't cut me off. Uh, back on my profile feed, I'll then click done there. The brightness, can play around with the brightness, it's quite a dark photo so I probably want to push the brightness up um, so that it's not really dark when someone's scrolling through their feed. Uh, but we don't want to go too bright because then it just becomes a little bit bleached out. So find a happy medium, I'm going to go to there, which is normally quite a lot. Most of my photos when I do edit stuff, I only go maybe plus or minus 10 in each direction for any setting. Um, but we're going to go 32 on the brightness because it's a dark photo. We'll increase the contrast a little bit, um, not too much. If you tap down with your thumb on the actual photo, you can see the before and the after back on the home screen. So I always refer to that so that I'm not changing it too much. Structure, I'm not going to put the structure up and make myself look ridiculously unnatural, um, but a little bit of structure because it is taken with the iPhone camera. The back camera of your phone is better quality than the front camera, that's why I use the back of the camera. Um, but I'll put in a tiny bit of structure. Um, the warmth, if you want it to be really warm, you can add it, if you want it to be really cold, then you can actually change the warmth. I think the warmth is fairly alright for this one, I might put it up one or two, but really not too much. Saturation, uh, the backgrounds are quite red. Saturation, the backgrounds are quite red already, so I don't want to make it really saturated, I don't want to make it unsaturated. Um, so I'm, again, I'm probably going to leave that at about two or three, not change it too much. Colour I leave alone, the fade I leave alone, highlights I leave alone unless I really need to edit them, but if you pull down your highlights, obviously, you highlights, and if you increase them, you can increase them, but I'm going to leave that on zero. Shadows, sometimes when I'm taking a photo in the dark, or with a downward lighting, the shadows don't quite work, so I will edit them, um, and you can do that similarly there, but for this one, I'm going to leave it. And then finally sharpen, I will always sharpen the image just to make it look a little bit better, normally in the kind of 30 range. This photo is fairly sharp already, so I'm not going to put too much on it, but I'm going to leave it at 32. Then I click the little save arrow at the top, and that saves my photo to my camera roll. I'm going to click done, and I'm going to repeat the process for the next two photos. Now, when we're adjusting this photo, because this is now the second photo, we don't have to worry about the headspace, because that's the photo that's not going to appear on your profile. So for this one, you can really zoom in and make yourself fill up that page, give yourself as much space as possible. click save. So now I'll click done, I'll click next, and I put a full stop. What that means, it's just my language, what that means is these have been edited and I can now write a caption, put some hashtags in and it's pretty much ready to post. I'll click OK, I'll click the back arrow, the back arrow again, save as draft. That's how I go about editing my photos for Instagram. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you liked it, that's just the whole process I do and I hope I'll catch you for another video soon.